Welcome to the 2015 Sustain You Conference. I'm sure more people will be um, dribbling in as we get started here, but we wanted to start the day with a special guest, actually our hostess, um, President Elsa Nunez of Eastern Connecticut State University, who's shown great leadership on sustainability and climate change action here at Eastern. And we're privileged to have her here to say a few words this morning. Welcome to all of you. I am um, very uh, honored to be in your presence. You're the people who drive the discussions in this country and the good actions that we take as Americans. And our attention has been, you know, not always in the right place on, on uh, sustainability and issues related to energy. And so I, I always uh, say how important it is for people like you to be acknowledged and told how important you are to this country because of your passion, because of what you believe in. and and it is inspiring. Um, I have the pleasure of being president of Eastern for almost 10 years, and the students who will succeed you in your job someday or you know, join you in your jobs and your firms are here at Eastern, and they're as passionate as you are, and it is really inspiring. The faculty will tell you how they think they can change the world, and it's just wonderful to see that because, you know, in fact, people with great ideas and great commitment can change the conditions of our society. So again, Thank you for all the work you do. We're, we're full of admiration. Uh, secondly, you know, I wanted to just mention that uh, I came to this work, uh, like all presidents, you know, there's an agenda and people push you in one way or in another, but philosophically was the first place where I landed with the conditions uh, in our country and abroad uh, and the conflicts that were created around energy, energy uh, uses and needs. Um, and I remember talking to my husband about how disconcerting I found it that the United States was so energy dependent and thinking at that time, I'm in my 60s now, it'll never change and things have changed. And so this idea of sustainability and, uh, and its connectedness to a great American democracy is really important to me philosophically. So this work is not just something on the list, but I think for me it has great meaning. And secondly, I would tell you, I'm a practical president, so anytime I can save money and I look at my budget, it makes me very happy. So the things we've done at Eastern, and Lynn Stoddard will tell you over time, uh, has really made a difference. I mean, on one count, I saw in one budget $100,000 saving in electricity. That's a lot of money. That's two faculty lines for me. And so on the practical side, I'm always interested in the discussions that you lead about energy savings and how we could be a sustainable university. So the conference is, uh, today is a meaningful one in many ways. So again, thank you for being here. It's a delight for Eastern to host this conference and to co-chair the Connecticut Alliance for, the, for Campus Sustainability with our colleagues at Yale. I was mentioning to our colleagues at Yale how honored we are to be partnering with them. It is very unusual, and I was at, in Washington for the last three days, for the public and the private sector to unite on anything. Usually, I mean, we have such different missions. So it is an honor to be uh, working with Yale, but also I think it's very symbolic that we broke that sector separation and that we're working together. So thank you for allowing us to join you. I'm excited to see that we have over 100 dedicated and enthusiastic sustainability leaders with us today, representing one dozen Connecticut colleges and university, our state agency and utility partners, and clean energy business, businesses. What a diverse group. There's students, there's faculty, there's alum, and staff responsible for managing college and university facilities, buildings, purchasing, community engagement, transportation, and sustainability offices. Our system consists of 17 colleges and universities, 12 community colleges, four state universities, and one online operation, which is called Charter Oak. The diversity of this group is a wonderful testament to the broad coalitions you have built to create momentum and strong leadership for sustainability on Connecticut campuses. I was also impressed when I looked at your agenda over the weekend to see some of the topics being discussed today. Creating zero energy buildings, using the arts to teach climate change, empowering a sustainable generation, transportation issues, solar energy projects. You have a busy, busy and productive day before you. And it's gonna be very stimulating, I am sure. Let me share some brief thoughts on sustainability progress in the United States and on our campus. These are important times. We are part of a great transition towards sustainability. 
Despite a changing climate that is impacting storm intensity, droughts, floods, heat waves, and more, and despite political polarization in this country and the dismissal of science, we are moving towards a more sustainable society. You are behind, you are behind the great stories of how this is happening, energy improvements on your campuses, locally grown foods in our dining halls, unprecedented growth in solar power, new transit projects in our state, students asking hard questions about investment in fossil fuel. Gatherings like today help us focus on the good work and the progress we are making so we can go back to our campuses prepared to do more, collectively and individually. I was intrigued by a recent article in the Wall Street Journal suggesting a huge shift in energy production in the United States. We are indeed getting greener. A projected record increase in renewable energy facilities combined with retirement of many coal plants and the growing use of natural gas to fuel power plants is driving us toward a more climate friendly energy mix. If projections are ac accurate, we could see a 2% drop in greenhouse gas emissions by 2015 despite growth in the, GP, in the GDP and a 16% drop in greenhouse gas emissions from the electric sector over the past decade. Colleges and universities have a special role in this transition. We are the only sector in the United States with a critical mass committed to the, co to the goal of being carbon neutral based on the strength of scientific knowledge and consensus. The growth of the American college and university's climate commitment provides a great example of leadership. This association started in 2006 with the discussion between a dozen college presidents about how they could support each other and collaborate to achieve a common vision of climate neutrality. I'm proud to be one of the charter members of this organization. I signed Eastern On in 2007. I was scared <laughs> when I did it. I said, oh my God, am I overstretching? And uh, I now look back and think it was a great decision. I have great staff that helped me make that decision. Since then, this amazing support network has grown to almost 700 presidents representing 50 states and every, time of every type of public and private higher education institution. We are fortunate to have Tim Carter. Is Tim here yet? Well, Tim will be here in a little while and he's the president of the Association of Second Nature and the Climate uh, Commitment Group of Presidents. Just as a collaborative effort of the association are showing important results nationally. The Connecticut Alliance for Campus Sustainability started just one year ago. I remember when Lynn came into my office to talk about it and I said, what a neat idea. I wonder how far she's gonna get and look at how far she has gotten with her colleagues. Uh, Co-chaired by Eastern and Yale, the Alliance has already improved communication, networking, and sharing of success stories through the annual conference roundtable events throughout the year and the listserv. The Alliance's major focus is to facilitate collaboration among institutions. By sharing our successes and our challenges and leveraging the experience, knowledge, and dedication that each of us brings to the Alliance, we will certainly accomplish far more together than we can individually. I'm very proud to have met the Commissioner Rob Klee of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Is Rob here yet? He'll probably be here later. And uh, very proud to have met him and very, very, very supportive of the work he's doing in our state. He's a great leader. Keith Epstein and Chris Dupuis from uh, the system office are very good colleagues and Keith couldn't be a better colleague in terms of understanding the needs of the individual campuses. Here at Eastern, we say we have a three-legged stool. The faculty has heard me say this. That's facilities, the academic area, the departments, the academic department, and then of course the Institute for Sustainable Energy. In our facilities department, uh, Renee Keish makes sure that all the campuses, it, the campus is green, that we abide by what we say we are abiding by, and she makes sure that we are uh, going towards our goal of being carbon neutral. The Center for Sustainable Energy Studies has an endowed chair. Paul Torsellini will be here later. He's Oh, Paul, there you are, great to have you here, is a Holsey Endowed Chair, and Paul's scholarly record is impeccable. It is really, really impressive. And he gathers the students around the academic issues, the courses, all of the things that we need for our students to understand the importance of sustainability in this country. Um, that leg of the stool is um, very important to Eastern because we're one of the few uh, institutions in the country that has an endowed chair and sustainability studies. And we're very proud that Paul holds that chair. 
Lynn Stoddard is the head, and you just heard Lynn speak, of the Institute for Sustainable Energy, which has a statewide presence. Uh, and has, does advocacy work and also educational work across the state with K through 12 and colleges and universities and all other state agencies. It's really important that at Eastern, it's a three-legged stool. It's not just in the classroom. It's not just an, you know, an energy institute working with outsiders. And it's not just what we do as a campus, the facilities department. But it's all three leaders coming together with a common cause, a common vision, and more importantly, a deep, deep philosophy to create change and to be the examples of change. I'm very proud to be president of Eastern, and I'm very proud of the work my staff and faculty are doing to make sure that sustainability is not just a, the catchy thing of the day, but that it's something that we live by every day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nunez. Um, so I just wanted to spend a moment with our co-chair, Yale, to talk a little bit about, about the Connecticut Alliance for Campus Sustainability. As the president mentioned, we were launched last year, so happy birthday, we're a year old. It's basically a group that focuses on networking among our public and private institutions across the state. Um, it's not a program that you join or a membership that you become part of. By being a higher ed institution in Connecticut, you're all part of the Alliance. Um, we focus, again, on networking through our listserv, through this event every year, through roundtable events and so on. Those were some of the first things we did over the first year. Um, Ginger Chapman uh, from Yale and I just wanted to mention a couple of things we'd like to launch this year. Um, one of them is um, focusing a little bit more on the opportunities for solar power on our campuses. So as you all know, I'm sure, solar has had an incredible uptake in Connecticut and nationally. The prices have come down significantly. Um, we have 10,000 residents' homes in Connecticut with solar panels. Um, Eastern is one of six universities that's part of Solarize U, which was launched, launched at last year's conference, um, which is uh, trying to get our employees to understand the benefits of solar for their homes. Um, and we actually just had our first uh, um, contract for an installation through Solarize U Eastern yesterday, right, Kate? And uh, Bernie over there at Smart Power are our partners in this, doing a great job. Um, we also, so those are some of the things happening around, around us about solar. Um, we want to explore what we might be able to do in this collaboration working together um, to promote uh, installations on our campuses. Today on the workshop agenda, you'll notice we have a presentation by Amit Ronan from uh, George Washington University to talk about a very inspiring, huge solar purchase that uh, three, two colleges and George Washington University Hospital collaborated on that's being installed right now, um, the largest installation east of the Mississippi River. So. Um, I pose that to the group today to be thinking about what are some ways we might be able to collaborate on solar, either by just sharing best practices and how we've gone about it, or actually collaborating among campuses for an installation. And you'll see one of the save the dates rotating on this and in your program is to focus more deeply on this at our roundtable event on June 25th at Wesleyan on the solar um, the solar collaboration opportunity. So I'm going to introduce Ginger Chapman, the director of Yale Office of Sustainability now, who's our partner in this and a great partner, and talk about another initiative we're launching this year. Thanks, Ginger. Good morning. It's great to see you all here today. Um, I wanted to mention an, another thing that we thought would be a wonderful way of getting folks together across the state. And it's an opportunity to really increase visibility and engagement in sustainability on our campuses. And this is Connecticut's uh, first statewide campus sustainability week. Uh, this is a, a project that we've been doing at Yale for a number of years. And we thought it would be a wonderful thing that if we could get it to go all the way across the state. Um, this fall, it's going to be held from October 5th through 9th. And we're hoping that each campus will highlight events and activities that week to welcome new students to campus and energize our communities. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Ryan Lamel, who is in our office, who will be giving a talk on this um, this afternoon. I think it's one of the last presentations, so hold out for that. 
Um, and uh, he'll describe how we've been doing it at Yale and also have a good discussion about how we can get um, all the other campuses involved. So this would be a wonderful thing if we could actually move this particular activity. Thank you. Hi, good morning everyone. My name is Laura Miller and I work at the Institute for Sustainable Energy. Um, thank you for being here today. So the presentations that are happening throughout the day, all of the information that is relevant to those, you can find in our lovely program. Um, on page, what I would call page three, um, so the third one in, um, you can see all of the details of the upcoming agenda. Um, during the breaks, which will be at 9.45 a.m., 12.45 p.m. and 3 p.m. The attendees are encouraged to visit poster sessions, which will be occurring just at the front of the room here, and also to visit the exhibitors, which you can see located around the side of the room. Inside your program, you'll notice that there is an exhibitor passport. The lucky person that visits all of the exhibitors, um, we're going to take, once you've visited all of the exhibitors and you can get signatures from them when you speak with them, if you just put it next to the registration box, you'll see a big jar. Someone will be selected for a prize and the prize is a selfie with the DEP commissioner, uh, Rob Clee. So we'll be doing that at 3 p.m. So you need to be there for the drawing if you want to win that wonderful prize. Um, the presentations are going to be beginning really shortly. Uh, so I would use this time now to make your way either to Student Center 217, which is just right across the hall, or Student Center uh, 115, which is just you have to go down the stairway. Um, if you're following us on social media, don't forget to use the hashtag SustainU2015, which is shown on the front of the program. Uh, and thank you. Enjoy the conference. Thanks, Laura. So I wanted to mention one more thing. A great thank you to our exhibitors who are helping support the conference today. Please take time to visit their tables and talk to them about the great opportunities they're exploring in sustainability. And um, our uh, main sponsor, the Connecticut Green Bank and Energize Connecticut. So we thank them for that. And Laura Miller, who just spoke, is the major coordinator for this conference. So um, she and Mimi Cedrone on our staff. Where are you, Mimi? She's back running around. Anyway, a special thank you to Mimi and Laura for putting this together. Enjoy the day. Thank you.